grab more market share. Here's a big issue, isn't it? It's my latest book, but I'll tell you what this is about. Staggering economy. Sputtering. What do we do? Even the greatest economists in the world are saying, oh, man, I don't know. It could be 1%, 1.5%. We got a little ignition in the stock market, but that's still not getting the rest of the economy going. Employment down, housing's down. Something. Okay. So people are saying, well, we'll have to wait for that economy to recover. Don't wait for the economy to recover. Don't try to predict what the economy will do. You, you won't be right if you try to predict what it will do. You will be right if you say, okay, hey, this must be the economy we're dealing with. Let's, let's deal with this economy today. And if you do that and then realize that in a flat market, when there are finite dollars out there and it's a zero-sum game, the only way you will grow your organization, whether you're one person or 2,500, the only way is to take business away from somebody else. Somebody else who is scared, somebody else who isn't doing something right, somebody who has weaknesses that you spot and that you can leverage. McDonald's was, wanted to grow. In the recession, they wanted to grow. They noticed Starbucks was expanding too fast. And that people were starting to be hesitant about spending 4 or $5 for a cup of coffee. So McDonald's said, we could sell coffee. We could also sell smoothies. People like those smoothies. Maybe we could put a coffee machine in us and we could offer a lower price. So they bring out this Mac Cafe idea, which they had had around for 15 years. Actually, they had tested it in Houston uh, here, and, and it didn't, didn't quite catch on. But they had the name. They had the idea. Let's do it. Let's go after it. We're going to target Starbucks, and we'll go after it. Here's what happened in the second quarter of 2010 after everybody's all up. They sold $420 million worth of coffee and smoothies, a 10% sales increase. What's interesting about that is that was $420 million new dollars to them, and it wasn't out of the economy, they took it away from Starbucks. What happened to Starbucks? Starbucks had to close 273 locations. They were strategic, and they targeted them, and they went after them. And the same thing happened with Best Buy. You know, in the home electronics industry uh, here in the States, Best Buy, it was Circuit City, it was Sam Good, it was all these places. Best Buy and Circuit City battling it out. And Best Buy noticed that, that Circuit City was more interested in selling the um, extended warranties than they were paying attention to the customers. So Best Buy said, okay, we're going to be customer obsessed. We're going to everything for them. Let's everything for the customer. We're going we're to learn more about Xbox. We're going to learn more about PS3. We're going we're to be able to talk to them about plasma versus LCD screens and so forth than they did. And they hired more young, smart people who could do that. What was the result? Well, the result was pretty predictable. They blew out Circuit City, all of them. 567 stores shut down. And now the emerging winner is Best Buy. Now, they're not perfect. They still have some things they need to do, but, th but they, they were very strategic and tactical about what they had to do because they noticed a weakness over here, and they played into the weakness of their competitor and took all their business away. Lowe's, Home Depot, same thing. Home Depot, the big dog, the home improvement, went after the contractors. Yeah, we like those contractors. They come in, they find their boards, and then they can check themselves out. We don't even have to talk to them. We love those guys. If you ever been to Home Depot and you try to find somebody and you see a guy in an orange vest, he sees you and ducks down another aisle. <laughs> Lowe's, on the other hand, took a decidedly female approach to do-it-yourself home improvement. They hired more women, made the aisles wider, better colors in the store. They didn't have the, the self-checkout. If you wanted to check out, they had a lot of people who would line up and talk to you as you walked out the door. What was the result? They closed 48 of those big box Home Depots. Became very popular. They paid attention to women. They leveraged the weakest of Home Depot. And they understood what it took to, took to grow. And look at, their, look at their marketing. It's just brilliant. Look at the, they like to wear a smile, then come wear a red vest. What they have to say here is it's a great culture of underlying this word, humanity. In this e-communication world that we live in, humanity is atrophying. We need to spend more time talking to other people, being around other people. 45% of college students don't know how to speak to other people. They can text, happy to text, but not a conversation. And look at the picture, my guy. Look at the th three young, attractive women, two old guys. <laughs> Who doesn't want to work there? <laughs> Here's how you spy on your competitors. Anybody can do this because all the conversations are public now. You should spot your competitor that you want to get business from, join their Facebook page, join their Twitter feed, see what they're talking about, see what their customers are saying about them. If they have an RSS feed, get on that. If they have press releases, you can get those for free. 
You can go to Google Alerts, type in their name, and you'll see what people on the, on the web are saying about these people, specifically customers who have complaints, and you'll see these, a pattern and a trend develop of why they uh, are ripe for taking business away. You can also do the same thing with your name, your personal name. Go to addictomatic.com, type in your name, and you'll see what people are saying about you on the blogosphere. All of this stuff is public now. All of this is free. And, th and these are the same tactics that McDonald's and Best Buy and Lowe's did. They're just paying attention, paying attention with their finger on the pulse of the culture.